Welcome to Ask Al, presented by Quad Plus. Here's today's question. What good drive preventative maintenance practices have you seen put in place? Okay, great question. And, and through the years, I've certainly uh, I've seen, seen the best of maintenance practices and the worst. As I started to prepare for this video and I wrote down everything, I started to see that there's really kind of two, two categories of, of ideas. One related to maintenance processes and the other related to actually what you do when you're out at site in front of the drive system. So let's start with the maintenance processes, hot spares. So a number of occasions I've seen customers where we'll be out on a site doing a startup and as soon as we're finished, the first thing they do is they come into the room with all of their spare parts and say, okay, install these. And I think it's an absolutely great idea. Um, you have all of the manufacturer's reps on site, you've, you've validated that your spares are good and those units, that those parts that you've taken out, you now know are not only configured, but they've also been tested and are operational. So you have a very high level of confidence. Uh, in their ability to perform. Managing broken seal parts. And again, this is very important in that, and, and probably most of you have been in this scenario where a drive has failed, you go to the storeroom, you bring the part out, open the box, the seal's been broken, uh, you look at it, the board's dusty, and now you're wondering, okay, does this component even work? Uh, and I've certainly seen where they haven't. Um, they'd been taken out, the person didn't understand what the first problem was, and then you start to call into question your entire spare parts inventory. So managing that, I think, is, is very good, a very good idea. Revision control across the enterprise. And this is important in that if you're not careful, you can get out of sync even within areas of your plant. And so where your spare parts over time no longer are compatible with the equipment that's installed in the field. So it's very important that you make sure if there are new revisions entered into your system that there is a compatibility, at least a compatibility understanding so you know what has to be done. Data recording. So most of you have PDAs or some type of process recorder. That information becomes invaluable when you start to look back. If you're starting to experience failures where you can see precursors, you know, and indicators which help you down the road. Um, subscribe to product update services. Most manufacturers today do offer push services where you can subscribe and receive information and generally select the type of information that you receive. Uh, anything related to product lifecycle events, hardware updates, and software bug fixes. So very important to, be no to know exactly what's going on with your product. Put repaired product into service right away as soon as you receive it back from your vendor. Uh, many of you have probably been stung where you've sent out a product because of a specific problem, then a couple years later, when you've gone to use it, that same problem is still there. So again, it's along the lines of the hot spares. Just make sure that when it comes in, you test it to make sure that it's functioning and in fact has been repaired. Uh, demo drives, uh, great thing to negotiate at the final end of a, uh, of a purchase. Uh, but if you have a demo drive sitting in your shop, there's a number of advantages. Number one, you keep your people trained. They can do things on the demo drive with, without interfering with production. You can also test option boards and smaller components, um, and then also verify parameter setups. So another great idea. So there are the, the main process items that I've seen. Of course, there's a lot more, but the things that I've highlighted for this video. Now, from a hands-on perspective, there's really three main things that you need to keep in mind and that is temperature, contamination, and electrical connections. So just some general comments on that. On the temperature side, always maintain the drive if possible uh, within a comfortable operating range, so in that 20 to 30 degrees Celsius uh, range. Contamination, what you need to really look at, is there any evidence of moisture? And you're typically going to see that as corrosion, either on circuit board traces, on the edges of the cabinet, exposed metal, and always make sure that there's the debris is cleaned out, both of the MCC room and the cabinet itself. As we all know, dust plus moisture equals catastrophe. Uh, electrical connections. Tighter is not better always torque the connections to the manufacturer's specifications. Look for discoloring around the terminals and on the lug. Uh, confirm the seating of all the connectors and edge connectors on circuit boards and do a pull test on the crimps. And this is particularly important on the power connections in that you can get the conductors inside the crimp spreading out, which effectively loosens the connection. Now, some of the categories that I, when I view preventative maintenance for drives, safety and protection systems, control system and security, input section, filter output section, which is fundamentally the core of the inverter, 
the cooling system, and then running tests. Now, talk a bit about uh, uh, environments, because your, your maintenance schedule is going to change depending on the environment that the drive's in. So I've, I've made three general categories, standard environment, 10 degrees C to 30 degrees C, so you know, good ambient temperature, no particulate in the air, and no harmful gases. Now what I call a harsh environment, 30 to 50 degrees C operating, ambient, altitude greater than 1,000 meters, there's particulate or gases in the air, and there's vibration. And then not to forget that there's also units in storage, which is a condition, and, and stored units do require some maintenance. So what we have is the start of a matrix here where we have categories by environments. So let's start with our protection systems. Generally, what you want to do is check your ground system integrity and your e-stops. Breakers, whether they're medium voltage, low voltage, and your transformer, all have time-tested maintenance processes associated with them. Uh, on your cabinet, again, always inspect, keep it clean, uh, and vacuum out any debris. Looking at your control system, system log analysis. So always look at your, your log, what alarms are occurring in the system? Um, have there been any faults? And, and investigate, do a root cause analysis can help you down the road. On your communications, internal fiber optics, network interfaces, and again, the main thing there is to make sure that all your connections are well seated. Um, archive all of your configuration files, and as you go through your maintenance each year, compare configuration files from year to year, and if there are changes, investigate why. Software and cybersecurity. Are there software or firmware updates available out there? And again, you would have received notices if you were subscribed to the, to the newsletters. Remote access review. Have there been engineers that you've had working on your site and working remotely years ago that still have access to your system? So always a good idea to review the list of who has, who has internal access. When you're looking at your encoder, okay, the important thing is what is the signal quality? Uh, are the connectors well seated at the motor end and also at the drive end? And also inspect the coupling to make sure that there hasn't been any slippage and there's no damage. Now, let's talk a bit about the input devices. Um, on your, whether it's a, a six pulse, 12 pulse, 18 pulse inverter, um, check the SCRs, what you're looking for, make sure that the gate leads are well seated, uh, there's snubber resistors and capacitors, make sure the capacitors aren't swelling, there's, there's no visible damage to them. Same thing with the resistors, make sure there's no signs of overheating. For active front ends, you're essentially looking for the same things as with the six pulse, the difference being the components that are, that are being used. And so again, you're checking the snubbers, snubber capacitors, snubber resistors, and the connections for signs of overheating. Now, on your filter systems, the thing to look for, uh, again, you've got capacitors. So on your DC bus, is there any swelling of the capacitors? Do you see any fluid leaking from the capacitor? There's a ballast resistor across each capacitor. Make sure that there's no signs of overheating and that there's no breakage of the case. Uh, other capacitors, for example, there could be a filter at the front end of the drive. You're essentially looking for the same things, and again, swelling and, and fluids leaking. Now, as you move to the output, you can really treat it similar to the input section in that it's the same componentry. So what you're looking for, again, signs of, signs of overheating, debris buildup, um, that the capacitors and resistors are all in good condition. So on your cooling system, again, make sure that the heat sink fins are all clear of debris, that there's no dust buildup. Um, for uh, vapor phase systems, make sure that the, you do a pressure check as per the manufacturer's recommendation, make adjustments as necessary. On water-cooled systems, it's important to make sure that this, the circulating system flow is correct, that the chemistry of the water is correct, that the filter media, you know, whatever type of resin is being used has been changed, uh, and that the fans on the heat exchanger, uh, again, are within their life cycle and that the heat exchanger itself is not clogged with dust or debris. Now, when it comes to running tests, I think a great practice is to do a thermal scan. And so you can do this safely by just as you go into your maintenance schedule, when the production is running, right after you shut down, disconnect power, open the doors, do your scan. It's gonna show you very clearly if you've got areas of overheating. And you're not necessarily interested in absolute temperatures, but what you wanna see is between similar points is the temperature the same. 
on the inputs and outputs, looking at the input voltage and current balance. Uh, and this is critical. I've seen situations where there's been an imbalance in the input voltage where all of the current is essentially being carried by two phases. So this has implications on overloading the input devices and also on your filter caps and that they're seeing much higher ripple current than what they're designed for. Uh, on your output, really what you're interested in is the output current balance. It's very difficult to make a, uh, any type of reasonable deduction based on the output voltage measurement due to the voltage waveform. And so putting it all together, we're left with a, a maintenance matrix. And you'll see one thing I haven't mentioned is to the far right is the units in storage and that it's important that every 12 to 18 months that you take those units out of storage, energize them to reform the capacitors. So if you'd like Quad Plus to come out and help you develop a preventive maintenance program or to help execute your preventative maintenance program, just give us a call or send us an email. And as always, if you have a topic that you'd like us to cover in a future video, just send me an email at al at quadplus.com. And remember, lock out, tag out, and always work safe. Thank you for watching.